um, I'll be speaking today about the Egyptian tax registry or the Egyptian tax experience, and we are, we are going to highlight our Ainchams uh, uh, TAVI program. We are really proud. We are, only, we are the only university hospital in Egypt that has a well-established TAVI program. There, was, there is no other um, um, uh, university hospitals in Egypt so far that do have uh, a TAVI program. So uh, this is my agenda. I'll be speak, uh, speaking about why TAVI, what are the barriers affecting uh, TAVI uptake in Egypt, what are the possible solutions, the current status, our experience uh, with some cases and some future thoughts. So why TAVI? You of course know that uh, TAVI is that severe vertex stenosis um, uh, is, pre is prevalent in the elderly population and once patients started to have symptoms either in the form of uh, shortness of breath, dyspnea, syncopal attacks of chest pain, uh, um, the prognosis is really bad. So we are dealing with a lethal illness. So uh, and uh, unfortunately, um, of course, we are fortunate enough as cardiologists that surgeons uh, did defer a lot of patients before the TAVI era. About thirds of the patients who uh, were in need of uh, TAVI or need for it needed uh, actual intervention for the severe aortic stenosis were deferred by surgeons in many um, European and American registries, and that actually opened the door for TAVI. Since TAVI already uh, was introduced uh, as a therapeutic option for patients with severe aortic stenosis, it has revolutionized the management of aortic valve disease in the elderly and the high-risk population. And there has been uh, huge improvement with the devices. Um, for example, the sheath size, starting with the 24 French sheath, which was a very large, uh, bulky devices. Now we have a 14 French devices that's um, with uh, much less vascular complications with uh, complete percutaneous procedures without the even need for a vascular cut down. Um, um, actually, uh, there are some barriers affecting TAVI uptake in Egypt. Uh, TAVI started in Egypt as soon as the valves became CE marked uh, and the start was uh, supported by the industry. Diffusion has been slower than expected, taking into consideration in Egypt we have around 100 million uh, uh, citizens and the number of indicated uh, cases uh, is more than 60,000 uh, cases actually. Uh, that was the first study case in Egypt done by our colleague, um, one of the uh, pioneers in uh, intervention cardiology, Dr. Ahmed Khashaba, with Dr. Ala Rojdi. Um, um, uh, and uh, that was published in the Egyptian Heart Journal. I think that was in 2011. That was the first ever TAVI case in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, but actually, unfortunately, that wasn't in our uh, university hospital. Um, we can um, 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 mention or um, um, describe uh, our problems. Uh, or barriers affecting uptake in Egypt in uh, these eight uh, parameters, the funding issue, the lack of well-defined heart team, the official, uh, the official sustained TAVI programs, uh, that was in 2013. There was no Egyptian TAVI registry, pro proper patient selection were uh, defectable. Um, uh, there was even barriers from the cardiologists themselves and uh, because of lack of awareness has been some barriers from the patients themselves and there was no international recognition. This were, that was the exact situation in 2013. Um, um, it's very important that, uh, to know that majority of cases at that time were um, out, of the out of the pocket. So they were paying for, for, for themselves. And at that point of time, TAVI wasn't the procedure that the Ministry of Health would reimburse at a wide scale. Uh, if it would uh, follow the poor health policies um, and aim at social justice. Um, but taking into, but uh, looking at um, even uh, some um, rich countries, Germany for example, before the reimbursement of TAVI, the number of cases done every year was very low. Once it has been reimbursed by the um, health insurance systems, number of cases dramatically increased. Uh, is it a cost-effective procedure? Uh, we do think yes. Um, yes, the valve itself is very expensive, but if you counted um, uh, the operative time, the length of hospital stay, need for blood transfusion, physiotherapy and rehabilitation, um, you can just uh, uh, um, 
uh, notice that it is cost effective and it is not as expensive or e more expensive than doing surgical aortic valve replacement. The situation in Egypt is a bit different. Uh, the valve cost is much higher than uh, the surgical uh, valves. Um, there is less impact of the length of, sp of, uh, of the stay uh, in, um, um, on the total cost in uh, Egyptian um, uh, hospitals. Um, the cost effectiveness threshold is unidentified um, and still um, um, it could be uh, a cost effective option for high surgical risk patients, but we don't have available data if uh, what is um, the cost effectiveness if you are going to deal with lower risk uh, population. Um, allocating funds is a very important issue. Uh, some hospitals are based on uh, donations as a Swan Heart Center. Um, some NGOs starting, um, started uh, to be interested in uh, supporting uh, poor patients. Um, uh, uh, but still, um, there has been some support from the industry, but actually wasn't expected. Uh, and still, so far, the number, the most of the cases are self-paying, they are paying from uh, for themselves. Uh, to have a well-established um, um, uh, TAVI program, you have to start with a well-established heart team. And uh, the heart team doesn't only depend on a cardiologist, surgeons, uh, uh, intensivists, but uh, we all actually need the support team with the uh, echocardiographers, the imagers, um, the, um, uh, the pharmacy, the uh, geriatric medicine, other specialities when needed because we are dealing with patients with a uh, lot of comorbidities. And the TAVI champion team, of course, if we included the hospital management and the funding organization to make um, uh, um, uh, a, a TAVI uh, a procedure uh, well established with um, a fully functioning program. Uh, what are the centers that can perform TAVI? Actually, they should be having an active valvular uh, heart disease program. Uh, there should be a high quality cardiac uh, catheterization lab uh, or a hybrid operating room. Um, high quality non-invasive cardiovascular imagers, including echocardiography, vascular imaging, CT, and uh, post-procedure intensive care that should be similar to the post-operative uh, care units for open heart surgery. And physicians involved in the TAVI pro um, uh, should uh, have an extensive knowledge of the uh, valvular heart disease, hemodynamics, appropriate diagnostics, um, and um, um, uh, uh, actually the application and outcome of the invasive uh, therapies. Uh, so we should have trained personnel, we should convince the hospital administration, converse, uh, convince our surgical peers, and the bottom line that we should, um, uh, we are, uh, uh, that everybody should know that we are uh, doing a teamwork, so we have to, uh, to play like a team. And we have to cut through hell of rectap, and we'll speak later on about our first study case in Encham University. And there was uh, too much um, uh, logistic issues that had been uh, we had to go through to have um, um, uh, to establish uh, our um, first case. And of course, allocating fund is a very important uh, issue. There was no TAVI registry at 2013, and uh, uh, in 2016, we actually gathered from different centers, Ancham University with a Swan Heart Center and the uh, National Heart Institute, and uh, we could uh, start doing, um, started uh, actually uh, the Egyptian TAVI registry, and uh, data should be published in 2020 uh, from the um, uh, done uh, TAVI uh, cases so far. The available valves in the Egyptian market are the, uh, we started with the core valve, but now we have the Evolute R4 Medtronic and the Sapien XT, we s still we don't have the Sapien 3, but uh, we have only the Sapien XT and the Evolute R in the Egyptian market currently. Now we have um, around 380 cases done in Egypt. Uh, 70 cases have been done in uh, our uh, Ayn Shams University. Um, um, the, uh, the largest number of cases has been done as one heart center. They did like 120 cases and um, almost equal shares in other um, um, uh, institutes. Um, most of the cases um, received uh, Evolute R and Sapien XT and a uh, small number actually, or around 70 pa patients actually received the core valve 
that was from the initial uh, experience. Um, these are data, some data from the Egyptian Tavi registry, but it's actually um, from the last year, so we had only 236 cases. Um, um, I just want to say that most of the cases were done from the transfemoral axis, only two cases were done from the transapical axis. Uh, around 50% of the cases were done using a proglide uh, without a vascular cut down, but around 50% uh, had an open uh, vascular axis. In hospital mortality was uh, less than 5%. Um, uh, pacemaker rate is around 4%, and uh, we still don't um, um, know why we do have a very low rate of pacemaker insertion compared to the international figures. Uh, maybe because the number of uh, operators are limited, number of cases is still not high. But uh, other complications um, uh, do um, go like most of the international uh, registries and um, 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 uh, data actually. Uh, cardiologists are sometimes barriers, uh, yes. Um, sometimes because of the professional jealousy and the desire for everyone who uh, performs coronary procedures to perform TAVI. Um, this should be actually killed. Um, at an institutional level to avoid, for example, having uh, hospitals where 50 procedures uh, are being performed by 50 patients instead of doing the 50 procedures by, for example, two operators. Limiting the number of, of operators will um, help having um, a better experience, better results, and will allow uh, to have a second generation of uh, ex experts uh, to um, uh, um, 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 have better uh, results. Um, uh, social stigma, um, this is again one of the barriers uh, coming from the patients themselves. Should we spend too much money on an old patient who is going to die soon anyways? Um, should we uh, spend this money on 100 young patients with mitral stenosis? Pericutase mitral uh, is much um, uh, less expensive. But we have to have some awareness campaigns to, um, 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 uh, to uh, change this um, mindset. mindset. Um, how, we did start, how did we start our uh, TAVI program in our university hospital? And how did this, this program evolve? Uh, this, um, that was actually in 17th May 2015. We had a, a patient who was candidate for TAVI. And I called Dr. Mai. we have a case, can we proceed? And there has been too much logistic problems. She called Dr. Muhammad Hassan, uh, at that time who was the manager of the Ain Shams University Hospitals. And um, uh, he um, could communicate with the, um, the um, more senior, I think, the dean at the time. And, uh, yes, we told him, um, and we didn't tell him the whole story, actually. So we said we were to be about. And there was a problem of uh, not having uh, a code in the, in the yes. you know, financial uh, um, um, system of the hospital that would cover the cost and yes. the and uh, so we correlated uh, it with this best thing, like a uh, uh, working bar. But there was a lot of the things that we had to go through, but we could uh, make it. And uh, finally, the uh, they admitted the case as a balloon for me, but they can see that I'm a private case for me that I'm going to do. So uh, that was what uh, has happened. So the and first uh, therapy was yeah. a balloon for me, not paper, yes. it was a balloon for me. Exactly, yes. And um, everything went fine. Uh, we tried to decrease expenses as much as we, as we could. Um, and that was some images with uh, the whole team, the operators, the surgeons. Um, uh, resident and CEO staff, everyone was happy at that time. Um, then we had to go uh, at a very professional level. We had to establish a program that couldn't have been possible without support from the hospital organization. Uh, Dr. Ayman was extremely supportive. Dr. Mahmoud Mutaini at that time was the dean of the hospital. Dr. Ayman Anwar was the manager of um, uh, Ain Shams Specialized Hospital. Everybody was. Um, um, was cooperative and could uh, really help us with every um, logistic uh, problem. 
we did like 70, 70 cases actually last week was the 17th, uh, 70, 17th case. Um, 47 cases were done in the last two years in the three major hospitals, the Demirdash Hospital and the, um, the Ac Academy and the Kadoslavsk Academy and the Enchant University Specialized Hospital. Uh, we started with 10, year, 10 cases in 2015. Every year the number was slightly increasing. In 2019 we did like 17 cases so far. Um, most of them were with the evolute R. Range of patients varied between 55 and 94. The oldest patient was 94 years old, uh, and the least body weight was 35 kilograms. It was a um, 70 year, years old, very frail female. Um, we had two valve valve cases. Um, that was uh, the first valve valve uh, case. Actually, both went successfully. Um, we haven't cases with uh, more than mild paravalvular leak, uh, post-implantation post valvuloplasty was um, around 20% of the cases. Only two patients had uh, permanent heart block that necessitated the permanent pacemaker implantation. Vascular complications were minimal. Chronic embolization, uh, we had a, a case of chronic embolization, maybe I'll show that case later on. Uh, that was managed successfully with a PCA device on embolization. We had two vas um, device embolization cases. One wa was with the Evolute R and one was with the Sapien XT, and both were managed conservatively, I mean, uh, successfully in the cat lab. Um, two in hospital mortalities in the last two years. Um, this is how the procedure costs uh, in our uh, institute. Um, you can change this to the US dollar. I think it's um, and by, uh, by, 17. by 17, I think. Well, I by 20, yes. um, so, so, yes. Uh, yes. Um, so, it's uh, like 28,000 US dollars, the whole procedure. And recently, the Egyptian health insurance system came on board and um, started to cover. Um, most of the expenses of the procedure. Once they have been shown and the results and uh, the success, so now they are going to cover, but only in two hospitals, yes? Two, um, two hospitals so two far, hospitals yes. So yes, far. yes, exactly. One so of them is here. Yes, and we, uh, we did actually a couple of weeks ago our first um, um, case who was um, covered by the National Health Insurance. Um, uh, for the sake of time, I'm just a couple of cases. That was uh, uh, one of the uh, cases that received a uh, valve valve. It had a degenerated uh, um, um, uh, biprothetic uh, valve. It had severe vertex stenosis. Um, and what that was the final result after um, core valve implantation. In that case. Um, uh, that was an interesting case actually. It was 73 years old, uh, hypertensive diabetes patient with AF, with recurrent hospital admissions with impending pulmonary edema over the last two months. He had uh, that was his CT actually, and as you can see uh, from the CT images, that the, the the distance facing the right coronary artery um, is very low actually. It's uh, 2.3 millimeter, 2.3 centimeters. Um, this is a very small dimension, and uh, the right coronary is, was too low seated. The risk of coronary occlusion after valve implantation with the displaced right coronary leaflet is very high in that case, and um, we had to um, um, to uh, go for um, uh, protection of the right coronary artery before uh, valve implantation. Of course, in that case, we can't use except an uh, sapien XT, the non expandable valve. The root R is no option in this case with very narrow uh, uh, sinuses. Um, and as you uh, as you see here, there is um, this is a guiding catheter, a PCA wire placed in the distal right coronary artery, and um, there is a stent even placed in the distal right coronary artery, just in case that there has been occlusion of the ostium of the RCA with the displaced leaflet, will <coughs> 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 
So we pull the stand out, uh, open it in the ostium, um, just if that happened. And we proceed with the type of procedure. The valve is inside. Final control injection. Rapid pacing and valve deployment. After valve deployment, there has been uh, filling of the right coronary with uh, the non selective pigtail injection, and then we even went with uh, uh, with the guiding uh, to make sure that the ostium on the right coronary is okay. After that step, we took the stent out the PCA wire out and um, uh, we were happy with the final result. Uh, last case uh, was a complicated case uh, that was a 73 years old with severe vertex stenosis. Again, he has uh, shallow sinuses, so we had to, um, to go for um, um, a sapien XT again for that time because of the shallow sinuses. Uh, what happened after um, crossing the wire is that the patient um, collapsed. He had cardiac arrest. He had a VF. What the VF because of the um, wire, because of the vertex stenosis, no, we couldn't understand at that time. So uh, while he was being resuscitated, I just introduced the balloon. I did a balloon aorta bioplasty while they, they were resuscitating the patient just to improve his hemodynamics. The patient was back. Um, um, but what we saw that with the uh, wood, um, that there has been actually sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, with a wood root injection that there has been staining of the right coronary artery actually uh, probably part of the calcium on the um, on the aortic cusp has been embolized in the right coronary artery and um, at that step, we had to, uh, to proceed with the PCA to the uh, right coronary artery. That was a PCA with a 1.5 balloon. Um, and then uh, we tried to introduce a stent, but the stent did not pass. So we had to use a larger balloon, a 2 -0, 2.0 balloon. And after that uh, balloon inflation, there was um, a TV3 flow of the RCA. So we didn't put the stent. And then we. Uh, continue with the procedure, um, valve uh, was um, uh, introduced into the aortic position. Again, rapid pacing, valve deployment. And that was the uh, final result. So uh, what can Egypt still do? Um, I did five patients for, um, for Tavi and, uh, and Saber. I did five patients who are more clinically uh, urgent, and now we uh, we started our uh, water valve clinic in Ancient University Hospital. It's twice per month. Uh, uh, it's going we to be more sorry. It's going to be more with the water team. Yes, hopefully, <laughs> we hope so. But uh, we, ha I mean, this is for the water yeah, valve, yeah. not for the water team. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have uh, an uh, water valve just for the trials of patients, whether to go for tavi or surgery. Um, we should be interested and we should get involved in mega trials and first demand trials um, like those um, uh, colleagues in Brazil um, um, that would uh, even um, uh, could uh, support us with uh, a good fund that could um, um, uh, help us um, do more cases uh, and uh, overcome the financial barrier. Uh, so, uh, what is this? That was the situation in 2013. In 2019, the funding is better, but more efforts are still needed. Um, we do have a well established heart team in NHMS University as one heart center, National Heart Institute, and the military hospital. Um, uh, official uh, sustained type program, the first case sponsored by the national insurance system was done uh, already. Uh, Egyptian type registry has been launched. Proper patient selection is much better. We now uh, got more experience to uh, exclude a few type cases. Uh, cardiologists 
its barrier is getting better and patients barrier with um, uh, more awareness campaigns is getting barrier still we uh, need to be more internationally recognized we um, uh, have to communicate with international bodies and that would definitely improve our experience so our TAVI program is highly rewarding for patients and clinic clinicians alike the results can be spectacular restoring a high quality of life to the elderly uh, and frail patients um, establishing a TAVI program requires a high level of cooperation between multiple personnel across uh, multiple uh, departments uh, we have to highlight the national registry bulk buying fund funding bodies international uh, research and thanks for attention